Do you ever feel overwhelmed defining your value by all of the roles that you juggle as a mom? Well, join me in day five of our Advent journey as the author of today's story shares her heart, unveiling the struggle that many Catholic moms face in discovering true identity beyond the tasks and the duties. Can you hear God's whispers in the quiet, assuring you of your immeasurable value? We'll stick around for a short story and moment of reflection that might just reshape the way that you see yourself. Hey there, Shannon here with Catholic Carolina Mom. If you're new to my page, thank you so much for being here and welcome. I'm a Catholic mom of five and I create videos to encourage Catholic moms to know and fully believe that regardless of what you're doing, whether it's decorating your home, raising your kids, or working out, that you can do it fully Catholic and all for God. Today is day five of week one as we journey through the Blessed Is She found Advent devotional for women. And we are going to read another story today from Rachel Balducci, who we heard from on Tuesday, that continues on with this week's theme of pursuit and rest. Okay, so before we begin, if you're enjoying this Advent journey together so far, please drop a comment below and let us know. I really would love for this to be a place of connection and just community with all of the Catholic moms that are joining in this journey and um, just to hear from you. So please leave a comment. Okay, so on to the story. If you'd like to follow along, you can turn to pages 12 and 13 in the book today. And it just looks like this story by Rachel Balducci. One of the greatest gifts God gave me when our sixth child was born, in addition to the gift of baby Isabel herself, was my complete inability to keep up with my life. In those moments after her birth, as I tried to manage all the moving parts of having five other children, I realized that much of what made life so challenging were all the extra commitments I had made outside of day-to-day -day survival. All the externals of my life, volunteer work, carpools, cheering on my boys at their games, these had become my identity. I was an active mama who was present and involved and capable. And suddenly, a new baby came along and the best I could do was provide basic care for that baby and my other children, feed them and clothe them. And that was about it. Feeling so limited was very difficult until I started to let go. I let go of my expectations of my abilities and of myself, and I stopped defining myself by what I did and what I had to offer this world. I no longer wanted to impress anyone. I just wanted a nap. I now see that season of my life as one of the most beautiful so far, and it was there in the resting that God revealed to me who I was. What I did wasn't the point. The core of my identity was that I was beloved by Him. And there in that retreat from my frenzied life, I started to hear and recognize this truth. As women, the temptation to find our worth in what we do is always present. We might define ourselves by our daily to-do list. We may base our identity on all we can get done. But when we can no longer keep up with all these moving parts, even if just for a season, it rocks us to the core. Who am I when not armed with a busy, mighty purpose? And here the Lord steps in to whisper the truth of our existence. By Him, you are seen and known and beloved beyond anything you can do. We hear this truth best in our rest, when we slow down, are forced to slow down, and have nowhere to turn but the deep silence within. God wants each of us to experience the truth of our identity in Him. If he is offering you rest, accept it. Even if rest is not being forced upon you, invite small moments of retreat. We find our peace in the silence. God speaks truth in the quiet of our hearts. Are you listening? Okay, so that was really convicting for me. 
And Rachel really speaks some truth by sharing her own personal story and experience. On Tuesday, when discussing Rachel's story, we spoke about how we can sometimes try to hold on to things really tightly to gain control of them, especially when things are crumbling or when trials and suffering come our way, with the hope that by grasping onto these things, they will provide us the peace that we're seeking. But we also discussed how this will never bring us true peace because the things and even the people of this world will always let us down. They aren't constant, often changing based on circumstances or situations. And we discussed how Jesus is the only one who can provide us with the true peace that we are seeking. In a similar message, today's story talks about how, especially as moms, we can define ourselves by what we do or by what we can offer the world. And I gave some examples earlier this week that really tie into today's message. For example, the mom who tries to be the best mom ever by grasping onto these things and doing the everything, right? All the things, um, volunteering all the time and making the best lunches and sneaking those little sweet notes in there just so she's the best mom or being the mom where you have to get all the perfect family pictures and every single thing needs to be documented and pictures taken and your life to, to look like it's absolutely perfect because you're gonna post it on all your social media in the hopes that you're gonna get all these likes and that's gonna give you your value. That's gonna make you feel good enough. Well, in today's story, Rachel talks about how that was very much her. She volunteered, she drove carpool, she cheered on her boys at all their sports games, and that was how she found her worth and who she was in those things. Of course, she didn't realize that at the time. But when she had her sixth child, she was essentially forced into a situation where it just wasn't practical to fit in doing all the things anymore. And so she was forced into resting. And she clearly states that she did not like it at all. She was not a fan of giving up the things that she was clinging to. Later on, she recognized that the reason she really truly did not like the state of resting was because she had always found her value in the things that she could do and what she could offer the world instead of finding her value in God alone. So when those things were taken away or they changed just a bit, she felt like she had no value and that she was worthless, really. Before having this revelation, at a retreat, she had kind of this rock bottom. And in a good way, she had decided to just let all of her expectations of herself go and no longer cared about impressing people. And that 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 is a good thing, right? We shouldn't be worried about impressing people. But it seems that she felt like she had no value to give anymore because she wasn't doing all the things anymore. And in fact, she says she just wanted a nap. And that's all she wanted to do. Now, probably because she had six children, including a newborn, as moms, we all dream of taking a nap. I mean, really. But going from PTA mom and room mom and volunteer of the month every month to 24 seven, staying at home, changing diapers, and doing endless loads of laundry, that can be really humbling. So thankfully, she attended a retreat. Now, whether this was an actual retreat or she had her own little retreat away from everything, she started hearing God speak truth to her, that what she does is not the point, that the core of her identity is that she is loved by him. And the same is true for you as well. It isn't about what you do or what you can offer the world that makes you special 
or important or valuable or good enough. Your value comes from God alone and the fact that he loves you immensely and he values you immensely, regardless if you're a PTA mom or you've never been on the PTA before. It doesn't matter to him. You are his child. You're made in his image and likeness and he loves you so much. Nothing can ever take that away. Not a new inability to volunteer and drive carpool because of the birth of another child. Not losing a job or a title at work. Not gaining weight due to having a baby or from your hormones or no longer having as much time to exercise. And not from having to downsize to a smaller and not so fancy of a home because of tight finances. God loves you and God's love never ever changes based on circumstances. It is always constant. We all find some of our identity from the roles that we play and that is normal and natural. These include being a wife and a mom and a daughter, a sister, a friend, and that's great and that is okay and those do define parts of our life. But what's so essential is knowing and fully believing that the core of our identity comes from God's love for us. And what's so amazing about Rachel's story is that as she looked back to this time of her life that she would have most likely referred to as this really awful time in her life. I mean, it was so awful. I couldn't volunteer anymore. I just had no purpose. I had to stay at home and just wasn't able to do all the things that I love or that I was used to doing, where she had felt like she'd lost her identity and she felt like she just wasn't good enough for anyone and was just in a really, really bad place. Now she looks back at that time and she doesn't call it the worst time of her life. She recognizes it as one of the most beautiful seasons of her life so far. Wow, that's really inspiring and so powerful for us as moms that if you are walking through a really, really tough season right now to have hope and to recognize that even though as women we're tempted to find our worth in the things that we do and what we can offer the world, and even like she says, from our to-do list and checking the things off of that to-do list, and just feeling really, really accomplished in that way by getting things done and doing things and signing up for things. But remembering instead to recognize that your core value comes from God's love for you and nothing will ever change that. And I love this question that she asks towards the end of the story. She says, who am I when not armed with a busy, mighty purpose? And that's a great question. Who are you when not armed with a busy, mighty purpose? And God answers you that he sees you and knows you and loves you beyond anything that you could ever do. And sometimes life can be so busy and so noisy that we don't hear this truth from God. And that's why we're tempted to believe the lies that our value comes from other things. And this is why the rest of Advent season and finding quiet time alone with God is so important. And it's in our rest when we actually slow down or even when our situation forces us to slow down because God works in really mysterious ways sometimes. But when we're in this deep silence within ourselves and with God, that's when we actually hear his voice. And we can hear the truth of his love for us. And that is a love that is constant and never changes. And we will actually be able to hear that and know that and believe that. We will go through tough times in life, challenging times, sorrowful times, and times that really force us to change our roles in life and not be able to live the way that we're used to living and filling the roles that we're accustomed to. But 
don't be discouraged. As we discussed earlier this week, God doesn't want us to have trials and sufferings, but He will allow it so that we are reminded that not only does He provide us with true peace, but that He also is the only one who can provide us with our true value at the core. And sometimes, sadly, unless we're forced to slow down, we'll be so busy and our life will be consumed with so many things and so much noise that we'll never have an opportunity to hear that message and a chance to believe it. So make sure that if God offers you a season of rest and quiet, that you take it like Rachel advises in this story and that you're regularly engaging in quiet and restful prayer time with him, listening for his voice, listening for his words of wisdom. So Rachel concludes with the fact that God speaks truth in the quiet of our hearts and asks, are you listening? So Advent season is an incredible time to listen for God's voice because in this season, it's supposed to be a time of rest, in a time of preparation, and this is why it's so important to not follow along with society's pressures of participating in all of the noise of an early Christmas season. The truth is, you're not going to be able to hear God's voice while filling what's supposed to be the quiet and reflective time of Advent with secular Christmas celebrations. How do you think you'll be able to hear God's still small voice in the quiet of your heart while filling any quiet you could possibly have with Christmas songs that sing about rocking around a Christmas tree or about how someone saw mommy kissing Santa Claus or by filling your evenings and weekends on the calendar all up with attending Christmas parties and going to Christmas parades and watching holiday movies. Instead, you should use the time of Advent as it was intended to quietly anticipate and prepare for the coming of our Lord, to sit in quiet with Him and to prepare your heart to receive Him. By embracing and living out the Advent season, you will have the ability to hear God's voice, to receive it, and then to respond. There are two sets of questions that are presented after this story on pages 14 and 15. The first questions ask, God helped Rachel to let go of being defined by what she did. How would you define yourself? Where do you find your worth, satisfaction, and security? How well do you think your sense of self aligns with what Christ says about you? And the second set of questions states, sit quietly with the Lord and share with him how you view yourself. Don't edit yourself, tell him everything. Then ask, Jesus, how do you see me? So I hope that you enjoyed this story today and I hope that you were really convicted by the message as well. So these are some really personal questions that are going to require some good quality quiet time alone with God to just really be honest with yourself and with him to answer these questions and to you know not be rushed and to be able to just talk to him and then listen for him this may be something that you want to just kind of read through the questions and reflect on them and you know you can write them down in the book or you can write them in your journal and then maybe go away from this for a few hours and go get some other things done or spend some good quality time with your family. And then as the day goes on, you may think of other things and God may speak to you in these other moments. But just make sure that you're definitely spending some quiet time with God and even forcing yourself to rest if you need to, to have a conversation with him away from noise and distractions. And whatever you hear or whatever God speaks to you in the quiet of your heart, make sure that you document it in your journal. So today's song of the day is another one from Lauren Daigle, and it's right in line with the message that we heard of finding our identity in God alone. 
and it is called You Say. Now, it's been a very popular song for a while now, and it's, so I'm sure most of you have heard it and probably heard it many, many times, but I would encourage you to click the link that I'll share down below and watch the video and just really listen to the words. I've put a lyric video in the link, and um, so it's really awesome, I think, to follow along and read the words, even if you know the song really well and listen for the message that we discussed today. And I, I think it's gonna be really moving for you if you do that. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very blessed with the time that I get to share with you every day. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. But until then, remember that whether you're decorating your home, raising your kids, or working out, that you can do it fully Catholic and all for God. Blessings to you, Catholic mom. See you next time.